So I wasn't even going to upload today, but then the baseball god said, here you go, Fuzz. Here's some work to do so you can stop relaxing and get back to work. We have a trade between the Dodgers and the Twins. We also have some updates on free agents like Brandon Crawford. Is he retiring or did he find himself a brand new team? What about Enrique Hernandez? We have updates on both of them. Also, a former Rangers outfielder is now with the Orioles trying to become a relief pitcher. It's a fun story, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Now, the first player I want to talk about, Brandon Crawford, the former San Francisco Giant. I cannot believe I'm saying that out loud. I thought he was going to retire before going to a brand new team, but apparently the St. Louis Cardinals are trying to lead the league in players who could be in a retirement home. I mean, Lance Lynn, Matt Carpenter, Brandon Crawford. There's some other guys I'm probably forgetting, but they're just trying to build a more veteran presence in that clubhouse, and it might work out because I remember back in the day when Brandon Crawford and the Giants were winning a lot of World Series, and that's because they had a lot of veterans in that clubhouse. Perhaps the Cardinals Cardinals are thinking Brandon Crawford can have yet another bounce back year like he did at 34 years old back in 2021. I mean, it was so random. He went from hitting eight home runs in 2020 to hitting 24 home runs with the 141 OPS plus by far the best of his entire career. And he had a gold glove that year as well. But since that point, he's had an 86 OPS plus in 2022 and a 63 OPS plus in 2023 while hitting 194. Now, the thing that kind of sucks about Brandon Crawford and the fact that he has aged the defense, it's still decent, but it's no longer 2015, 2016 Brandon Crawford when he was one of the best defenders in the league. So maybe Brandon Crawford is simply going to be a helping hand for Mason Wynn, who had an absolute bullet of a throw a few days ago in spring training. I think that he's going to be pretty good. And maybe that will motivate Mason Wynn to go out there and feel some pressure as opposed to, yeah, it's just your job to lose, kid. No, maybe he's got some competition and that will light a fire under his you-know-what. All right, so let's talk about the breaking trade between the Dodgers and and the Twins, Manuel Margot, who just got traded to the Dodgers a few weeks ago or months ago, I think at this point. When did that trade happen? It was a while ago. He came on over in the Tyler Glasnow trade. So Manuel Margot, an infield prospect, as well as some cash, they are going to the Twins in exchange for a minor league shortstop, Noah Miller. And what's crazy, I've actually collected a few of Noah Miller's cards, not because I think he's going to be the next Troy Tulowitzki, but he's decent. So let's talk about all three of these guys right now. And then afterwards, we'll talk about Enrique Hernandez because he kind of plays a part in this trade. So we talked about Manuel Margot in depth when he was traded from the Rays to the Dodgers. The thing that is weird about Manuel is the fact that he hits better against righties. I mean, at least he did last year. He had a 694 OPS against righties compared to a 665 versus lefties. Either way, those aren't very good numbers. But where it gets interesting is that in the final month of the season, Manuel had six extra base hits while hitting 333 with a near 840 OPS. And if you go even deeper, Manuel in Tropicana at home had a 219 batting average and a 50 59 OPS plus when he was on the road in 43 games he had a 303 batting average and a near 115 OPS plus so when you get him away from Tropicana Field when you have him in certain spots where maybe Alex Kurloff needs a day off or someone like Buxton or anyone in the outfield needs a day off man well Margot he can come in be pretty good defensively and on the bases and he's not going to contribute much offensively but he's decent going to the twins along with Manuel Margot is a 20 year old infielder slash utility player by the name of Rain Don Khan I've never heard this name so if I botched that completely I am very sorry but last year in single a for the Dodgers he showed off a good amount of pop he had 21 doubles and 14 home runs and just 107 games but the thing is he hit 216 with a 283 on base percentage so the twins they're usually fairly good at finding guys that get on base at a high clip maybe they can adjust his plate discipline and approach at the dish because he's got some tools he just strikes out a lot and he doesn't really take a lot of walks so who are the Dodgers getting in return for those two guys as well as some cash we have 21 year old shortstop Noah Miller and he doesn't have the most juice I've ever seen. He had eight home runs in 120 games last year in high A ball, but he's pretty quick. In 2022, at 19 years old, he had two home runs and 23 stolen bases to go along with a 348 on base percentage. In 2023, he had eight home runs, so the power is creeping up as he gets older with only a 309 on base percentage. So with the increased power came more strikeouts, less walks. He had a 309 on base percentage, which is not going to cut it. But he's pretty good defensively. He's someone that the Dodgers can build up over the next few years while Gavin Lux 
next tries to reclaim his throne as an up-and-coming star in this league. So Noah Miller, we won't see him for a long time, but that's the trade. Now, if you're wondering why this trade even took place, it's pretty simple. The Dodgers are reportedly close to signing utility player Enrique Hernandez, and I believe by trading Manuel Margot, the Dodgers are saving anywhere from like 10 to 12 million dollars. So the signing of Hernandez is contingent on that trade actually going through. They have to pass some physicals and all different stuff. But the money that Manuel would have been earning in 2020 four is now probably going to get diverted to Mr. Enrique Hernandez, a fan favorite. And I thought that he was going to be leaving because a few days ago he posted a Dear LA and I thought for sure he was gone and he was going to be thanking fans all over again. But then he posted this earlier today, kind of trolling everyone and cheesing on the stories on Instagram. So he's back. So let me know in the comments, what do you make of Brandon Crawford going to the St. Louis Cardinals? And what do you make of this trade? Manuel Margot and a young prospect, they are going to the Twins in exchange for a minor league shortstop, No Miller. All this really did was open up a spot for Hernandez so there you go what do you make of all this do you all remember this guy right here Ronald Guzman a former outfielder for the Rangers as a rookie he had 16 home runs now he wasn't very good at getting on base consistently but the power was 100% legit and he had a cannon for an arm well now he's using that cannon for other purposes he is trying to become a lefty reliever for the Orioles I believe last year he was with the Giants I don't know if he got a ton of playing time or anything like that he's still trying to work on his command he can get up to 97 90 miles an hour I believe he has a slider as well but yeah he's with the Orioles he is the third player over the last few months to transition from a former positional player to a pitcher first it was Charlie Culberson then it was Charlie's former teammate DJ Peters and now Ronald Guzman he's trying his hand at pitching so they're all three trying to become the next Anthony Ghost and if you guys don't remember Ghost used to be a positional player for the Tigers he had an absolute rocket in the outfield and then all of a sudden I saw he was on the Guardians I didn't even know that he was with Cleveland then he was out there pitching and it was really cool. I was actually super pumped for him because he wasn't very good offensively. So the fact that he was able to use that rifle for an arm in a different way, it was really cool. Now, before we do today's Immaculate Grid, I just want to show Pirates fans something to look forward to. Look at this kid right here, Tamar Johnson. He's a 19-year-old super prospect. I mean, I'm calling him a super prospect. I think he's going to be so good. He swatted not one, but two home runs today. He's got a really cool swing. I like his bat path. He's going to be really, really good. So I just want to show that to Pirates fans because it might be a rough year, but hey, that's cool. All right, let's do today's Immaculate Grid. The Braves and the Twins. I'm going to go Eddie Rosario. That is a super easy one. The 300 home run career. I'm going to go Harmon. How do you spell Harmon? Harmon Killebrew. Eight. Yeah, okay, there we go. 100 plus run season for the Twins. Uh, did Kirby Puckett ever do that back in the day? He did. Okay, 43%. I thought I was going to be sneaky with that. Braves and the Reds. I'm going to go Adam Duvall. I saw his name in an article like four or five minutes ago. 300 plus career home runs played for the Reds. I'm going to go Adam Dunn as opposed to Ken Griffey Jr. 100 plus runs for the Reds. I'm going to go Joey Votto. I kind of want to go Eric Davis, but I feel like I might risk it at that point. The Braves and the Rockies. Who was that one guy? Was it Nolan? No, what's that guy's name? Sam? Sam Hilliard. I remember thinking that he might be good for the Braves because he's tall and fast and he has great exit velocities, but not really. 300 plus home runs for the Rockies. I don't remember if Todd Helton ever had 300 plus I think he, what about Matt Holiday? Did Matt Holiday ever hit? Okay, he did. I almost thought for a second I botched that. And then 100 plus run season for the Rockies. I'm going to go Helton because he got on base a lot. He had to have had 100, right? Yes, he did. My Raiders score is not that great, but I'll take it. If you guys enjoyed today's recap, do me a favor, leave a like. And if you're brand new, hit that subscribe button because we have some bangers coming up soon. Like the fact that we ranked the best player at every height in baseball. It's going to be a lot of fun. Catch you then.